Hi guys, this is Ashley back with another podcast episode and we got a lot to discuss. So Taint Cobain, um, he is signed to Nicki Minaj's Heavy On It. He also is a Grammy Award winning producer. Um, he's worked with Nicki. Um, he's worked with Cali for Area Coles. He also worked with Queen B. Okay, I believe it was Virgo Groove. Or some song on Renaissance, okay? And he tweeted um, one of Nicki Minaj's very popular lines um, on Twitter. All these PR stunts, but B word, dot, 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 okay? And then, um, you know, he retweeted a fan saying um, they're talking about go produce good beats in the quotes. As if you didn't win a Grammy from producing a Queen B song. Then he also retweeted another fan saying, they're in the quotes crying about Tate being a man. Then what is Ken Barbie? Because if you guys remember, Ken Barbie um, was going at it with JT. Then Cardi B goes crazy on social media per usual. She said, how you a grown ASS man subbing me. I don't give an F. Who gassing you, grown ASS man? Watch your mouth when you're addressing me because he called her the B word. And then he said, constantly subbing and deleting tweets, Coochie ASS, I don't know you. Okay. And, you know, her fans started tagging, you know, Tate Cobain, um, telling him, don't let Nicki Minaj get you beat up. Off the cheek gets involved and asks where he's at. Um, trying to meet up. Tate also made fun of Cardi B getting a drink thrown at her. And Ken Barbie gets involved too. And to me, this goes both ways. First, if the shoe fits, wear it. Okay? All he did was tweet a Nicki Minaj bar, but you felt like it fit. Okay? Because you do be doing the PR stunts and people do feel like you're throwing the mics at the DJs, at the fans, you know, yelling at your fans um, is for PR, okay? Nothing that you do comes off genuine. And you can't be mad that people um, see right through you. But um, for Tate's sake, I don't think it was necessary for him to throw shade at Cardi B because you are still a producer. This could possibly affect how, you know, people view Tate And they may not want to work with him. They may think that he's messy, okay? Because it could come off as he is just throwing shade at Cardi B because he is signed to Nicki Minaj. That's what everybody's going to say, okay? Whether, you know, he may not really like Cardi B, he may really think that she is doing the PR stunts, but just coming off as, um, you know, other people may not look at it that way. They may see it as, He's throwing shade at Cardi B because he signed to Nicki Minaj. You know, that's unprofessional. I don't want to work with him. He's too messy. That's what it's going to come off as. Okay. So I don't think it was a smart decision in the long run. Okay. Even if you feel it or think it, you may not want to tweet it because, you know, just because you're signed to Nicki Minaj, you're still going to have to work with other people. And then also people are going to run with that narrative. Oh, Nicki Minaj must be talking bad about, you know, Cardi B to her artists, which I highly doubt. But that's the narrative they're going to run with. Okay, so I do feel like, yes, Cardi B be doing the PR stunts. But when you're a producer or an artist, you can't pick sides. Moving on to Doja Lamar, Doja Badu. Now, I didn't even realize it when I uploaded my video yesterday. That I had did a reading nine months ago um, in regards to Nicki Minaj and Doja Cat. Um, and I did say that, you know, they were going to have a tower moment or they were going to kind of fall out. Okay. I know some people may not believe it now, but in the future, they will have a tower moment. And, you know, they won't have, you know, a close relationship um, it looks like a falling out could happen in the future. And then we also have the Five of Cups in reverse. And this talks about forgiveness moving on. Okay. So even though they have, um, even though they will have a falling out, 
um, there's an opportunity to make amends or they're just going to forgive each other and just go their separate ways. So you guys can check out that reading. And, you know, I also got that, you know, they would work together too. But what I think is hindering Nikki from working with Dolce Cat is the fact that Dolce Cat kind of did like a 180 on everyone. Even people are saying SZA and Holly Bailey um, have unfollowed her. And the thing is, Dolce Cat is doing a lot of demonic, um, you know, symbolisms and rituals on her Instagram. So Nikki and probably a lot of other people did not want to see that. So I think that ruined her getting a possible collaboration. Okay, because that wasn't Dolja in 2018, 2019. She wasn't taking pictures dripped in fake blood and, you know, dressed up as the devil. And she wasn't doing all that. She just started doing that. So I feel like she's kind of ruining her relationship and from people supporting her because she just does too much of the rituals and symbolisms. But also, I feel like Nikki don't really fully trust Dolja Cat. Dolja is very slick with it. Um, I think that, you know, I've talked about this before. Um, Dolja Cat does not have her own fan base. I said this before Nikki even unfollowed Dolja Cat, that most of her fan base are the Barb's. Let's be very clear. I would say probably like 50% of her fan base on the barbs. And so with that being said, Nicki Minaj knows that. Now, um, this definitely could affect Doja Cat, uh, being that most of the barbs are, you know, her fans. Uh, but I feel like people have been tuning out to Doja Cat even before the Nicki unfollow because of, you know, her music kind of changing. And then, you know, obviously the demonic rituals. But this definitely benefits Cardi B, okay? Cardi B is probably jumping for joy, ready to get her next facelift, giddy on the inside because now Doja has an excuse to work with Cardi B, okay? She can be like, well, you know, Nikki don't follow me. She don't really mess with me like that. Um, So I can work with Cardi B and you guys cannot feel no type of way about it. Okay, so this actually benefits Cardi B a lot. And then on top of that, people are going to say, well, Doja Cat wasn't following Nikki. Um, and she wasn't, but she followed Rico Nasty. She was following Dolce. She was following some celebrities, uh, but she wasn't following Nikki. She had unfollowed Nikki after Nikki declined to be on Planet Her. See, she unfollowed Nikki in 2021 when she said she wanted to follow Furniture. And I do think that Doja Cat is a fan of Nicki Minaj. I think all the female rappers um, are fans, but I never thought that Doja Cat was a barb. I think only the fans thought that, okay? I really don't believe any of these female reciters and female rappers, no matter what they say, are truly barbs. They see Nicki as competition. Let's be very clear. Because Scratch Off was running around, oh, I'm a barb, I love Nicki, blah, blah, blah. And then... The first time Nikki rejects her, she starts switching up. Same thing with Koi Fish. She did the same thing. Same thing with Summer Walker, Normani. They're all our barbs until Nikki says no. Okay? Um, so I really never believed that Doja Cat was really a barb. I do believe she was a Nikki fan, but there's a distinction between a barb and a Nikki fan. Do I believe that Doja Cat is going to just start dissing Nicki Minaj in interviews and tweeting about Nicki Minaj and throwing subliminal shots all the time, like scratch off? No, I think she's going to be classy about it. She knows that if she throw any subliminal shots, she's going to lose even more um, fans. And she already lost like 600K followers on Instagram. She got to tread lightly. So I don't think she'll do anything stupid. And to be quite honest, I think she probably is a little bit relieved because now she can collaborate with like the Cardi B's, the Megan's and the Barb's um, can't really be upset. She's going to be like, well, Nikki, don't follow me. You know, I can do whatever I want now. And um, I think that Carisha going to be next to get the unfollow. Um, I think Carisha um, doesn't deserve a Nicki Minaj follow in the first place. She's definitely an op. And um 
when that happens, she definitely will be throwing subliminal shots. Her and Mr. Brown going to be right there tweeting um, whatever they put in their group chat that's going to be on Twitter about how they really feel about Nicki Minaj. Now, moving on from that, um, some fans have made a ridiculous rumor that Lana Del Rey, um, one of my favorite artists, I love Lana, very underrated artist in my opinion. Um, But fans were saying that she put a spell on Kalani, Dolja Cat, Nicki Minaj, Camila Cabello, and Ariana because of, you know, um, a complaint that she had in 2020 um, when she talked about certain artists going number one on the Paola Ha 100, um, talking about sex, cheating. Showing a lot of skin in music videos, okay? Um, she called out, um, you know, the general public about this when Say So Remix went number one. And so um, she was just complaining about how people said that she glamorizes abuse, but prays, you know, these artists like the Kalani's, the Nikki's, the Dolce Cats, um, the Ariana Grande's, the Camila Cabello's, who all went number one, and they glamorize abuse according to her and in the last year or two um you know all the people that she has named you know in this um long rant that she did on social media you know bad stuff has happened to them Kalani um her career kind of flop Beyonce right now no shade and she had an injury at the Beyonce you know concert um Unfortunately, Dolja Cat, her career is hanging by a piece of thread. Um, Camila Cabello, I don't even know what happened to Camila Cabello. Is she still here? Um, you know, Nikki, she has been swatted, you know, sued several times. And even Queen B, she recently, you know, had an injury allegedly, and that's why she wasn't going too hard with the dancing um, when she first started performing for the Renaissance Tour. And then Ariana has this big cheating scandal, okay, going on. Um, And, you know, she did say in her rant that, you know, people glamorize cheating. And Ariana does have a song called Break Up With Your Girlfriend, okay? So she did glamorize it. But I don't believe that, you know, um, Lana Del Rey is responsible for what's happening with these ladies, okay? People got to take responsibility for their own actions and hold artists accountable for the things that they do. Don't try to say, oh, it's Lana Del Rey's fault that Dolja Cat is being demonic. No, don't do that. And I believe that Nikki is being targeted um, and that's why she is getting swatted, okay? Because people know her address um, because of Kenny's record, they're going to play with her, okay, until she leaves Kenny. That's just going to be what it is for Nicki Minaj because her um, address is public. And she's not the only artist or celebrity that has gotten swatted. A lot of these celebrities, because of the area that they live in, eventually, you know, the general public finds out where they live, okay? But it wasn't until she got with Kenny that her address became really public. Okay, and every time she purchased a house, it's public news. Before, when Nikki used to purchase, you know, houses or when people found out where she stayed, it would only be when something kind of happened, like when she got robbed by Meek Mill. Okay, then people knew where she stayed at. But with that being said, um, that's the reason why she's getting swatted because people are trying to target her because she with Kenny. That's the only reason. Okay, because her address is public. See, if they didn't know where she lived, they wouldn't be able to swat her. But because it's public, they're able to do that. And they do it to the Kardashians because, you know, Kardashians, they got the reality show. They be out in Calabasas and the Hidden Hills. And then when, you know, drama occurs, like when the whole Megan and Tori situation happened at Kylie Jenner's house, you know, people start you know, digging and doing the research and be like, oh, Kylie lives here. And honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if it was one of her neighbors or a Barty gang member. And they're just trying to play with Nicki Minaj because they know that she is an easy target. Okay. But once that person get caught, you getting sued. 
So is it going to be worth it? Because I highly doubt Nikki is going to want this person to get away with this, especially since it's been the second time. And I can see her getting swatted again. I think they're going to continue to do it. Um, so that way she's forced to move again um, and try to inconvenience her. Now, Chloe and Holly spill some hot tea on live together about, you know, previous relationships or maybe current relationships. Take a listen to this. Have you ever reached out to another girl online? No, I have not. Never. Have you ever received a message from a girl online? I have. Yes. Wait. Technically, I did. You did? Mm-hmm. I can't say it on here. Okay, well, technically, I did, too, because... Technically, I have, but it was on some, like, nice girl stuff. Like, like the nice nasty? Yeah, like, nice nasty. Like, I'm a girl's girl, so I'm always going to go with the girl first. Because sometimes the niggas be lying. Exactly, but it was, like, on some nice, nice stuff, so I didn't really have a problem with it. Okay, well, let's get back to the email. I Okay, so I never received a message from a girl, per se, or the other person. However, I have received an email that had detailed evidence the person was doing. And me Oh, I, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait I a told minute. you this. When was this? But you received the email from... It was a DM. They actually DM'd yeah, yeah, yeah. our godmom. Yeah. And she showed it to me. Mm. And I... But that's the thing about being... And it was right. The thing is, it wasn't... It was not... It wasn't... What do I say? It wasn't a troll. It was true evidence. And I said, you know what? I did what I needed to do. I screenshotted what I needed to screenshot. I said, it's above me now. Mm. And I said, I wish you the best in life. And I blocked them. But that's the thing. So I don't know why Chloe continues to not just name drop and tell everybody that Memphis Bay cheated on you. Okay. I told y'all this tea before that she was seeing Memphis Bay, Lori Harvey's ex, and he cheated on her with multiple women, not just one. And, you know, she blocked him. Okay. And that's why they're no longer following each other. You know, people keep saying, oh, no, it's Diggy Simmons. No, she follows Diggy. And they were doing that for the show because on the show Grownish, he was her love interest. Okay. On the show Grownish. But she's no longer on the show. So that's why you don't really see them interact like that. Okay, but Memphis DeBay, he and her um, were an item. Okay, and he's the one that cheated on Lori Harvey, too. That's why she ended their engagement, because he cheated on Lori Harvey. Now, Memphis DeBay is a soccer player, I believe. So a lot of these athletes, you know, they have trouble sticking to one woman. I mean, that's just how the game goes. Same thing with these rappers and a lot of these celebrities. So, I mean, you know, Chloe will find somebody, but, but I don't know why she just won't name drop. Everybody behind the scenes know that Memphis DeBay was the one that cheated on her. But Diggy, because they were on the show Grownish playing each other's love interest, everybody thought it was him. And that's why he was getting flack, but it wasn't him. It was Memphis DeBay. And that's why... A lot of people dragged him for that um, single Busy Boy. They thought, you know, Busy Boy was about Diggy. They were doing that because of the show. Now, moving on to SZA and Travis, um, all the two men. Um, a lot of people are wondering, are Travis and SZA dating? Okay, because, um, you know, he was in her K-pop music video. Um, clearly, they're spending a lot of time together. I believe that Auto Two Man is using SZA, okay, because she is popping, okay. SOS was more successful than her last album, and yes, they always been cool, okay. But he never tried to get with her back then. It is only now that SZA is staying in the top ten, and I think that he's looking for a hit song. That's why he grabbed up Bad Bunny and The Weeknd and Champagne Thickums. He grabbed up all the A-listers so that way his album could be successful. 
after he killed all them damn people at his festival, okay, two years ago. And so I believe if SZA wasn't popping, like if if SOS didn't really do well, okay, and people weren't talking about it, he would not be up under SZA, okay? Even with, um, you know, her last album, he was on it. That was a popular album. It did not flop. That's why he's willing to let go of Kylie, because guess what? The Kardashians star power is slowly dying down. Kylie not as popping as she once was. He got with Kylie when she was really popular. Okay? Um, he knocked her up and they were only dating for like six months. Okay? But it was because Kylie is popping. Now that Kylie not popping no more, he, he don't want nothing to do with Kylie. Okay, I see how Travis Auto Two Man moves. He's a clout chaser, in my opinion. Um, you know, and once he get whatever he get from SZA, he gonna dump her to the side and go back to the white girls that he usually dates. That's just my opinion. I don't think this is completely genuine. I think people want to believe it's genuine because they like when celebrities get together. But men can be clout chasers too. I see how he dumped Kylie now that she's not as popular as she used to be. And all people are saying, oh, it's because, you know, she found out about what happened between Kylie and Tori. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Y'all was broken up at that time. You slept with other people too. You cheated on Kylie several times. So I don't want to hear that. Um, You use Kylie and you're using SZA, point blank, period. But anyway, I'm going to end it here. Thank you guys for the support. I will see you guys in the next video and have a great day.